All right, um, peace, love, happiness, and wellness. Welcome to my YouTube channel. And what I'm going to be talking about right now is what did I do? I believe I just shut down what I really wanted. What I'm going to be talking about is Dr. Sabi. Okay? We're going to be talking about Dr. Sabi and. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's get, the, let's get the, the picture back up. Yeah, I want to talk about Dr. Sabi and his food guide because I, I think it's important that I get this on record that that one of the most impactful moments of my life is when I just when I found out about Dr. Sabi's food guide. He has so many different videos out there. As a matter of fact. As a matter of fact, let me go to his video because I was supposed to pull it up for you guys. The video, the very first video of Dr. Sebi that I watched. And if you don't know who Dr. Sebi is, Dr. Sebi, eat to live or eat to die. If you don't know who Dr. Sebi is, basically Dr. Dr. Sebi You have to watch Doc. You have to listen to Doctor Sabi. I can't really just tell you who he is in a nutshell, but basically he has the, a whole food approach. But it's not only a whole food approach; it's an alkaline food approach, where are not even first of all we eliminate all uh, meats, uh, dairies, and starches. Right. So whenever we're talking about starches, we're still talking about uh, vegetables or whole foods, but not all whole foods are natural some are many or most of them are hybrid so what he does he has a list of foods that he he did his own research on himself and found them to be alkaline or the best available foods that we have in the mass you know on the mass market you know so that's a little bit about dr Sabi. just a small midget and this video right here uh, eat to live or eat to die was the very first video. It was two hours and 23 minutes and I soaked up every word of it and I've probably seen about 10 hours of that video alone because I watched it over and over again to make sure I understood. If not 10 hours, now nah, let's say about eight hours, but I definitely watched it at least three or four times. So yeah, probably more 10 hours or more. And obviously, obviously you see there's a lot of videos. There are many people that uh, subscribe to Dr. Sebi. And here's one that I've never seen before. It said, why you'll never heal on Dr. Sebi. I can't, I can just tell you right now, I can't agree with that because, because of my journey. And he has a food guide. And we're going to, what we, this video is about this food guide. I want to jump right into the food guide itself. Here's Dr. Sebi. Um, in order to get here, you have to go to his sell food um, website. You have to subscribe. And then once you subscribe, uh, will, or once you log in, um, it'll give you a, a, a PDF to download, and then you'll have this food guide right here. And what I want to talk about is Dr. Sebi's food guide. And this is the this is the approach that I love, and it goes with Genesis 129. Genesis 1, 29. Genesis 1, chapter 29. Um, if a lot of people read the Bible, but it's definitely not aware of this. You can probably recite this verse, but don't understand it. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon. And but guys, I'm not religious. I'm not a Bible thumper. And this is just a place that this information is at. So, just so you can know that. Um, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree, and the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you, it shall be for me. What he's saying is that uh, every herb bearing a seed, so dandelions, they bear a seed, um, wild yam, they bear a seed. Basically, when you're outside, when you see this green stuff that we call, what do we call it, um, weeds, that they bear seeds, this is our food, okay? Um, and then, which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree, in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, meaning that the tree that yields a, f a fruit, 
that has a seed inside of you. The seed like an avocado, right? Avocado tree had the avocado has seeds. The orange tree, the oranges have seeds in it, right? Apple tree, the apples have seeds in it. These are these are our, our food. And these these um, um, herbs and trees that bear seeds shall be uh, for meat. All right. So that should be our meat. In other words, that should be the stuff that goes into our mouth. If we're going to put stuff in our mouth, then that should be our meat. That should be our food. And our food are our herbs and our, our fruits. Okay. And let's get to the food guy. We, uh, one of the very first things that I think I downloaded the food. One of the very first things that um, I like to go to the fruit section. Let me go to his disclaimers kind of disclaimers I don't I'm not gonna go to well it's just important things to remember first of all if it's not on the list uh, this nutrition guide it is not recommended so basically he rec everything that's on his list is what Dr. Sebi recommends this video is for people that don't know anything about like how to eat a whole food plant-based diet or what foods to eat where to go what pros like i have no idea where to begin but if i had this information i'm going to definitely use it i'm going to be on top of it and i'm i'm, I'm going to uh, be successful all right that's who this video is for if you know what you're doing if you've been on the journey if you're like nah i don't agree with this or i don't agree with that that this isn't for you you know, unless you want to just speculate and comment and, and, and just chime in and say whatever you want to, that's fine. I'm, I'm on Facebook. I'm, I'm on social media. I, I know how that goes. I, I, you know what I mean? It's, I'm, I'm ready for that. Um, but as Dr. Say, it's no canned or, or seedless fruit. In other words, nothing that comes in a can, nothing that is seedless. Uh, because if it's seeded, then where did it come from? Right? You know, it wasn't it, whatever, wherever it came from. It's not a natural. It's not a natural production. And if it did come by naturally, it's not going to continue. All right, it's not continuous. Meaning that if maybe two different things or two different species kind of came together and created a, a, a created a hybrid, that won't continue to happen. It's two different things so happen to come together and create a hybrid. But when those hybrids fall, if that ever just naturally happened, those hybrids fall. It's not going to produce anything. Yes. It's going to take man intervention to continue to make that happen, right? Put kinetic energy, put man's energy to make that continue to happen. But nature itself won't do that. Wild yams produce a wild yam, produce wild yam. I'm talking about the actual herb. The dandelion is going to produce a dandelion. The no-power cactus is going to produce a no-power cactus, right? The oranges is going to produce the oranges, right? If that even is producing itself out there by falling off the tree by itself. I'm not 100% sure, but I definitely know that that seed coming out of an orange produces another orange tree all right like Sabi says avoid using a micro a microwave it'll kill your food um, he's, he's talking about your herbs so many of the grains listed in nutritional guide are available as pastas bread flour and cereal and can be purchased at better health food stores okay um, natural growing grains or alkaline base it is recommended that you consume only the grains listed on this guy all of them except for uh or in other words use these grains instead of wheat no animal products no dairy no fish no hybrid foods and no alcohol um and then he talks about his products but i'm not i'm not going to go into the products which is just herbs certain powerful herbs that he uses and other people also use herbs they have their own perspective but this is doctor doctor dr Sabi's perspective this is this perspective was again like i said my entry uh, drink a gallon of natural spring water daily. I've never done that. I've never done that. Um, but I'm sure other people have, have have been very successful, has reached a certain level of uh, health activity, and etc. All right. So now we're going to get into the we're going to get into the food guide. So the food guide. This is how you break the food guide down. You break it down from vegetables, fruits, right? Which is your meat, your your herbs, and your fruit. Right there, right there, 129. And then you go into your teas which are certain specific herbs you have your grains which are the grains we were talking about right so you have you have your your vegetable seeds you have your your you have your vegetables you have your fruits now you have your herbs 
that generates seeds, right? Amaranth is a plant, phonio, kumu, quinoa, rye, spill tip. These are all plants that when they grow, they, they produce a seed and they produce a plethora of seeds. And you can just take those seeds, you gather them up, gather up the harvest, and you put them in water, they get soft, they have a nice little nutty texture. If you're from Texas, you're gonna to wanna to put some sugar on it. You know, back in the days we put some butter on it, but now it'll be maybe a vegan butter or just don't use butter at all if you're gonna keep it clean. Um, but these are your grains. Instead of wheat, it's if in the standard American diet, basically you're gonna remove all those grains and just put wheat right there. So you're not you're gaining you're gaining one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times the power. One grain of wheat, which is what the system affords us, to eight different grains, amaranth, phonio, kamu, quinoa, rice belt, tuff, and wild rice. All of these are alkaline grains. You can figure out which one you like the best. Start somewhere. Start now. I just made a video about taking action. In order to in order for your lifestyle to transcend what it is right now. I say if you want to lose weight and you know that you have to change your diet, it begins with taking action now. You don't sit up and say, I don't know how to do this or I don't know where to begin. You just begin now. Um, my recommendations based on what, how I eat, what, that maybe you may like it, especially I'm from Texas, um, you like rice, rye. Rye may work as a rice, but wild rice. Wild rice, definitely. Wild rice, in my opinion, is probably the best transition. Um, you may have to change some things up, but at the end of the day, you're going to have to practice and get experience and learn for yourself. I'm always going to say that. Learn from yourself. Experience trumps all. Quinoa. Quinoa is a really good uh, food option. Uh, you know, if once you get started, three months, six months, one year, two years, three years. You get some years under your belt and this is gonna be no brainer. You're gonna figure out exactly what you want. If you wanna, um, uh, you know, maybe salty, maybe herby, maybe dice on tomatoes, maybe put some quinoa on top of a, of a, of a bed of kale, um, you know, maybe have some tahini, which is basically come from sesame seeds. It's not on the grains, but it's actually down here on the nuts and seeds you have you have hemp seeds uh so let's move on down to the to the nutty seeds right so now we're remember we're not in the herb we're not in the herbs in and or the the plant basically the vegetables and we're not in the fruits right now we're in the kind of like the condiment section right uh you know, we're not uh, away from the grains now we're in nuts and seeds so when we're talking about nuts and seeds what well, what about pecan seeds what about brazil uh we got brazil nuts excuse me what about um you got hazelnuts, you have uh, cashews, peanuts. Well, why, why aren't these nuts on there? Dr. Sabi, it was something in Dr. Sabi's research that he found that he found that these weren't alkaline or they weren't natural or something was happening with the food. Um, you have to watch his videos. I'm not going to give you all the juice and spend so much time talking about his perspective and the reason why he made the decisions that he's made. But this Dr. Sabi is the king in the in the black community of, of health all right there's nobody more bigger and more popular right now trending in in social media than dr sabi other people out there but if you look at this list the foods that you see on this list you're going to see these are the foods in the grocery store and there are so many other foods that are out there other food lists that are out there but you're going to find the food list the foods that are on dr sabi's food guide to be out there and to be um um, gaining in profits, like it's really becoming expensive, like spelt flour, uh, uh, or spelt right here, spelt spelt flour is like the, a top flour out there. We try to keep it, but it's it getting too expensive in the stores, so uh, we kind of hang around rye. But really love spelt hemp seeds. Hemp seeds, you can use hemp seeds to make milk. That's why we use hemp seeds. We don't use hemp seeds uh, for anything else, really. Um, but you, other people out there use hemp seeds for all different types of things. We use it to make milk. You can use it for whatever you would use it for, right? The type of diet that would work for you. Um, again, raw sesame seeds. Um, I don't do sesame seeds. I don't do a lot of seeds. I don't do a lot of nuts. But the raw sesame tahini butter, 
about a fourth cup of tahini butter, a little bit of water to kind of break down the consistency, add in some sea salt, and, and you'll see the sea salt is, is on the list. The pure sea salt down here, right here, salty flavors, pure sea salt, powdered granulated sea salt. Basically, just salty flavors is, is on a part of his list. Some people say no. I disagree, Dr. Savy disagrees, many other people disagree, but other people, you don't need it. There's so many different perspectives out there. Um, we're just talking about Dr. Savy's food guy. You can add that into your tahini butter, mix that up, and it, it makes a really nice salad dressing. You don't have to go to the store and buy a vinaigrette or whatever. Or if you want to, you can you can get yourself a vinegar, maybe a, a, a vinegar that you like, and you can add it to your uh, tahini and you can have a different type of tahini butter just go to youtube youtube vegan tahini uh salad dressing and you know there are hundreds of people that are creating videos that you can be inspired by and, and get those ideas from brazil nuts um again just great nuts right either if you want pecans eat your pecans but if again if you're if you're trying something different um, Dr. Sebi recommends Brazil nuts and not your pecans. Well, why can't I have my pecans? Who cares? No, that's when we give aside the point. You know, we give aside the, the facts. Like, try something else first. You've been eating pecans because you've been eating pecans your whole life. That's why. How about that? So, try the Brazil nuts. Um, let's go into the oils, right? Olive oils. Oh, man. Do not cook. Coconut oil. Again, you know, don't cook. Um, but the, the oils that you can use, grapeseed oil, sesame oil, hemp seed oil, avocado oil, all these are great oils, not only for use for eating, but for, um, I like to apply this to my skin. And when we start getting into salves or things, so that's what I put on my skin, right? Um, are, are these oils. You know, I like to tend to take a nice oil bath. Right now I have the olive, I got the olive oil. That's what I have. I've been using olive oil for my bath water. Um, my wife, we always have coconut oil. It's cheaper. Grapeseed oil is what we cook with. It's what we make popcorn with. It's what we fire food with. Um, we bought some avocado oil. I don't know how that's working out with my wife because I don't get in the kitchen and, and really cook much. She likes to cook for the children. Um, then again, you have hemp seed oil. I've never bought that before, uh, but again, it's on the list. However, again, you hear people say no oil. First and foremost, these are plant-based. These are raw. These are oils that hasn't been um, basically pressurized or processed. All right, it's basically been squeezed out of the plants. Is it a high concentration of oil? Right? Is it more than what you're going to get out of, let's say, the oil out of out of a, a plant or a seed? Yes, but. I mean, there are therapies like the Gerson therapy that they use this. I did an actual uh, liver cleanse using which oil was it? Using the olive oil, and um, I pulled out. I wish I would have made a video about it. I think I did make a video about it. It's an old video, old old video. Um, but I pulled out about 150 stones. It came out of my bowel, and there's a certain process. What's his name? Uh, he passed away, I don't know, Eric Snow, hold on, let me, liver, gal, that are flush, since we're here, let's see if I can find him, alright, right here, Andreas Moritz, so, boom, just putting you up on game right here. So that video was created in 2011 in less than a year or maybe a year and a half later I did that so I was I was pretty much um, I was pretty much up on it right like like up on this type of information back then when you know when things were really starting to kick off all right back to Dr. Sebi's guy 
All right, so so that's the the nuts and the seeds and the oils. That's the grains. Let's go to the uh, uh, natural herbs. We got burdock, uh, chamomile, elderberry, fennel, ginger, raspberry, and tila. Ginger, we know what ginger is. Raspberry, we know what those are, right? We know what the raspberries are. Tila, I'm not aware of. Uh, fennel, again, we should know what the fennel is, but if you're making a tea, it's like huh, maybe a little pungy type tea, but um, um, it's, it's a nice, it's, it's really, it's a therapeutic, therapeutic tea. I don't drink a lot of fennel. I do drink a lot of elderberry, chamomile, and burdock. Those are my go-to teas. So you can pick whatever works for you from this list. Have those teas. Build up a certain habit with whatever you like and see how that works for you. All right. So these are the teas. My tea, how do I make my tea? I like to put uh, a sweetener in it. Lately, I haven't been because I don't want the sweetener, I, but the sweetener would be agave. And but uh, lately, I've been trying to stay away from from the agave because I just don't like the way that um, it, that it works for me. It may work well for other people, uh, but too much of uh, sweeteners and dates uh, hasn't been working too well for me. Uh, so I like more uh, pungy, more milder food food. So let's get into spices and seasonings. Again, in your cabinet, you're putting stuff on your on your grains. Maybe adding something to your your vegetables, you know, for flavor. And that's why they call mild flavors and, and then pungent and spicy flavors. So if you want something a little bit more spicy, you want to move to the right side. Um, uh, achiote, I'm just not aware. I just don't use that. Um, but um, cayenne pepper, I love it. Or they call it African bird pepper or onion powder. I, eat, I use cayenne pepper and onion powder. Onion powder almost every day. Cayenne pepper about two times a week. Depends on the time of the year or what type of diet my diet looks like. Uh, habanero, I know, but we have hot peppers out in our yard. Um, and then sage. My wife loves sage. We always run out of sage. Um, I love to grow sage. I grow plants. Mild flavors, same thing. Oregano, dill. Cloves is kind of... Uh, that's not mild to me, you know. Clove is a strong, pretty a basil, a mild basil leaf, a uh, skin bay leaf, a uh, mild tarragon thyme. These are all mild, really nice flavors. You're probably going to use more mild flavors, um, um, and, and add a few uh, spicy flavors to spice up your your meal. Salty flavors. Uh, you use your salts, right? You just want to keep it pure sea salt. You know sea salt. You know you got Himalayan sea salt. You have your powdered granulated seaweed, but just any sea salt, right? Or your or seaweeds, right? Uh, so your kelp, dulse, nori, you know, these are all your 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 salty flavors. Um, again, your sweetener either be uh, pure agave, pure agave syrup from the cactus, that's where agave come from, or your date sugar. Okay. Now the bulk of the information is really up here. This is your meats. This is your food, your vegetables and your fruits. You have some people that uh, that that don't do too many um, sweet fruits, and you have people that really only do sweet fruits. Um, and, and on this chart, he has them divided into vegetables and fruits. But let's let this be clear: in the vegetable section, the almost everything up here, with this, the exception of few, are fruits. Because okra is a fruit, olive is a fruit, squash is a fruit. Tomatillo is a fruit. This is on the right hand side. Uh, zucchini is a fruit. And those are all fruits, right? And the vegetables or the plants or the herbs, right, that aren't spongy or, spongy or spicy, but your big flowery herbs, your wild arugula, your purslane, watercress, turnip greens. Uh, and that's one, two, three, four. And then your sea vegetables, which is five, six, seven, eight, maybe, or nine of them. That's nine different vegetables that you can have different meals different ways of putting things different combinations together on your right hand side as far as vegetables go on your left hand side remember you saw your seeds your grains so you had amaranth grains now here's the amaranth plant so you have amaranth greens or i guess they call it callaloo or a variety of greens um you have what else dandelion greens you have the isote or the cactus flowers so that's actually the flower or the leaf, it's not the actual cactus, but the, uh, or excuse me, 
and it's the actual flower itself and you have kale and you have lettuce all lettuce except for iceberg lettuce so you know it's trash that big ball heaping ball i don't even know if it's real there's been a uh a youtube video trending about that iceberg lettuce and how it's not even real uh, as far as like it's made in asia and they make it out of some type of weird stuff like a liquid but anyways and now uh again in the vegetable sections again on the left hand side avocado bell peppers cucumbers um those are your fruits those are fruits guys and then you have some beans up there which is which is pretty much uh it's not a bean it's more like a it should actually be a grain garbanzo beans should be put up there with the grains down with the grains but it's up here in the vegetable section it's not a vegetable it's just that it's not a sweet fruit so uh you got your uh, mushrooms then you got your no piles which is a no cow no pile cactus so you got your no pile cactus and then you have your uh the actual uh plant that's up there uh, the isote the isote is a cactus the, the flower that comes off of the no pile mexican cactus all right so fruits now this is when you get into the heap of it it's, it's the all the different communities that are out there um, this is what people really love, you know, when you start getting your fruitarian, uh, you know, all that good stuff from your apples, bananas, berries, cantaloupe, cherries, you know, dates, currants, figs, grapes, limes, mango. I love mangoes, my favorite mangoes, melons. Right now it's oranges. It's we're in the we're in the it's January the first. We're we're dealing with oranges right now. There's a lot of oranges out there, so that's what I eat a lot of. I don't know, and there aren't any, aren't any melons out there right now, and I see it, I didn't even realize seeds, but some mangoes out there, but I don't buy them, not right now, yeah, it's kind of expensive to get them down here right now where we are, um, but in this in the summertime, in the spring, in the summertime, they're going to be abundant, uh, papayas, peaches, pears, plums, I mean guys, these are all fruits, and this is these are the things that you want to eat prickly pears prunes some things that we we don't know like prickly pears the prickly pears come off the no pile cactus again after the plant you have your no pile cactus then you have your isote flower then out of that flower come the prickly pears so you know obviously it's a it's a very um it's a benef benefiting plant it provides a lot of food that's that cactus a texas that texas or mexican cactus uh, prunes, raisins, seeded raisins. I've never seen that before, but I mean, you know, it's on there. Uh, soft jelly coconuts. Oh my gosh, those are so good. You can find those at Asian stores. Sour sops and the tamarind. Right. So this is Dr. Sabi's food guy. This is Dr. Sabi's food guy. Um, again, in order to get to this food guy, you have to go to drsabysalefood.com. Go and take a uh, login or get a get yourself a login. Then once you get there, you can just follow the instructions uh, until you can get you this food guide and get that food guide. Get it downloaded. Get it put on your wall. Um, right now it's 2019. I began in 2012. I haven't had this on my wall since 2014 because it took me like a year just to become real familiar with it. Then I didn't need it anymore. You deal. You build your own routine. You do what you need to do. All right, let me step back so you guys can see my full, full body. Right now, I weigh 100. I weigh 180 pounds. All right, I'm 10 to 13 pounds more than what I have been in the past. Um, you know, over the over the past seven years, I started out at 100. And, I mean, excuse me, 230 pounds. I went all the way down to 152 pounds. I decided on my own. Said, you know what? Let me stop this. Uh, let me, you know, I started eating more because I wasn't eating the grains. And the less grains you eat, the more light you're going to become, which is really beneficial. It has its own benefits to, to not eat as much, right? And the more you eat, the more problems you're going to deal with. You're putting food in your body. It's slowing down your system because you have to break down the food. So now you begin to swell up. You get a little bit bigger, even on a plant-based diet, especially when you're eating a lot of grains. I'm at 180. I'm eating a lot of grains right now. Less fruits. I'm still eating fruits. Less fruits, more grains, right? And plus I'm exercising, so my muscles are gonna, my muscles are gonna, uh, are gonna pop out um, because of the exercise. Not fat, but I'm definitely uh, really overweight right now at uh, training at about 180 pounds. So, but um, in the in the in normal 
you know, normalcy at the age of 37, right? I look pretty, I look pretty good. I mean, my body is, I'm in pretty good shape, right? To be 30, uh, excuse me, I just turned 38 years old. So I'm 38, this is how I look. My legs, you know, I've been into, I've been exercising my whole entire life. But um, again, I've been plant-based since uh, 2012. This is how I look. This is the food that I've, I've been eating. I haven't eaten meat. I might have had a few, like a few little remnants here and there. Like I might have, I, I got fooled or whatever at certain, at certain functions or, uh, you know, when I had to do some, had to do a little bit of time in, in jail, in a jailhouse. Um, you know, some, it just depends on you eat, eat food with other people and you find out it might have been some fish or something in it. Little small stuff like that, but it really wasn't like a conscious effort to eat meat. I think I've done that once, maybe, um, just with with someone, with with, uh, with a, a four family member. Um, yeah, man, so that's that's the Dr. Sabi, that's the Dr. Sabi food experience. Um, share this video. You know, it can inspire someone to go and find Dr. Sebi, or it can inspire someone to come back to my page. So subscribe to my page if you if you haven't. In time, I'll set the notification button, the, the notification key. I'm going to keep this information coming. It's health conscious information. So we're dealing with mind, body, and soul. So we're not just dealing with food. We're dealing with mental health, mental uh, illnesses. We're dealing with diet, we're dealing with exercises, we're dealing with habits, we're dealing with everything that deals with health, deals with healing, deals with everything that comes in that that affects health, right? Peace, love, happiness, wellness, I love you guys.